So yeah, 200 degrees in the oven um, for about 15 minutes. Um, Moody, the camera's rolling. Oh God, sorry. Oh, there you go. Hi two readers and welcome to my November Moody Thoughts. Now back in 2010, I lost a dear friend of mine, the legendary photographer Corinne Day, who died from a brain tumour. Corinne was the photographer who gave me my break in fashion as a hairstylist when she offered me the chance to do the hair for a shoot for the Face magazine back in 1993. I'd coloured the model's hair for her as I was the colourist at the time, but the hairstylist who was supposed to do the shoot dropped out at the last minute and Corinne was stuck for someone to do the hair. As I'd worked on the colour for her, she thought it was an obvious choice for me to take over the styling of the hair too. Only seeing it as a favour to a mate, I agreed to do the shoot and even rang in sick on a Saturday to my job at Tony and Guy in order to do it. And calling in sick on a Saturday in the salon is an ultimate sin. I remember being as nervous as hell, but I was lucky to be working with some great encouraging people, including accomplished stylist Kathy Castrine and makeup artist Virginia Young, on my first proper editorial shoot. Three months after the shoot was done, it was published in the Face magazine, and I was booked for an Italian Vogue shoot off the back of that being published, and the rest of my career is history, as they say. Corinne's work epitomised the 90s and the noughties. She was the photographer that most people cite as being the instigator for grunge fashion and photography in the early 90s. She discovered a young model that nobody was really working with at the time called Kate Moss, creating iconic imagery of her that has gone on to define an era and also changed the way people looked at fashion and models. As you know, Kate has gone on to become the British icon, sorry, as you know, Kate has gone on to become the biggest icon of British fashion, but Corinne's work went way beyond Kate Moss. Unfortunately, there was a backlash against grunge when a young American photographer sadly died of an unplanned heroin overdose, and Bill Clinton, the US president at the time, decided to blame what he called heroin chic imagery as the catalyst behind all the drug taking that was going on amongst young people at the time. Corinne's work was targeted as an example of such imagery and she was pretty much outcast by the industry that originally welcomed her with open arms. As a backlash, Corinne decided to explore this, type, this side of photography more and began to photograph her friends in a more frank documentary style, which resulted in a book called Diary in 2000, accompanied by two exhibitions. Corinne saw this as a step into the art world that seemed more accepting of her work than fashion at the time. The book caused quite a stir when it came out and also featured quite harrowing images she'd instructed her boyfriend to take following the diagnosis of her brain tumour back in 1996 in New York. After Corinne recovered from a long treatment to the tumour, she began to take photographs again and was eventually invited back into the fashion fold as they began to celebrate her previous work again. This time she approached fashion a little different, attempting to play the game much better than the second time around after being quoted as saying the first time she was just innocent and naive to an industry that threw her right in at the deep end. Whilst Corinne continued to take more pictures for every existing Vogue and other fashion magazines, barely anybody knew that there was still 10% of the brain tumour left in her head, which was too close to her brain to remove due to the risk of paralysing her. It remained dormant for a long time, and unbeknown to us as her friends, she'd actually been given eight years in total to live, following the diagnosis. Corinne outlived that prediction by another six years, but eventually the cancerous tumour took hold and sadly took her life in August 2010. Last month, a new exhibition opened at Gimplefee's Gallery in London, titled May the Circle Remain Unbroken, which is to accompany a new book of Corinne's work. The title comes from one of her favourite songs by the band The 13th Floor Elevators. The book has mainly been compiled by her husband, Mark Sarsi, book publisher Aaron Morell, friend and muse of Corinne's Tara St Hill, and former agent of Corinne's Susie Bachik, with a little help from myself and a couple of other close friends. It has developed from the previous exhibition of Corinne's work, Heaven is Real, which was shown a year after her death. It is an homage to her pioneering and influential style of photography, with lots of unseen work and images that Corinne created of her friends or muses who she loved to photograph between 1987 and 1996. Corinne's husband is quoted as saying that he is very proud of her work for many reasons, the most visible being her beautiful work. That doesn't make sense, Tom. 
Corinne's husband is quoted as saying that he's very proud of Corinne for many reasons, but the most visible being her beautiful work. For me, the book is a collection of pictures that Corinne took over two decades, showing the different sides of her personality that many people who didn't know her didn't get to see, that also goes way beyond her work with Kate Moss, of which she's always linked so synonymously with. Many people thought Corinne was a dark and mysterious person, which in some respects she was, but I spent a lot of time with her, travelled a lot with her for work, and she it was also loads of fun, absolutely loved to laugh, and live life to the full, even when she knew she was seriously ill and wasn't going to recover. She never gave up hope of a cure, either with her numerous, with, with her numerous attempts at alternative therapies in the hope that something might change her life's destiny. She never complained about her illness, she just used to view it as a slight inconvenience. One of her old assistants once described her to me as a woman with the balls of ten men, and to be honest, I couldn't have put it better myself. She had a quiet voice, but not a quiet mind. And all of that is reflected in this beautiful new exhibition and book. And so I end with saying that should you be in London up until November 23rd, then please try to get to see the exhibition. And if not, then just buy the book as it's not just a photography book, but a celebration of somebody's life and their friends. Thanks everyone, and I'll see you next time. I'm off to have my dinner. <laughs>